take you through the senior season. You guys are here, and like Coach said, uh, you knew you had a good team, but did you think you'd be here today? It's funny. So this whole entire year, we love our brothers on the team, but waking up at 5.30 every single morning to do workouts and conditioning, our goal is to be good at football and just have fun with it. Never in our lives would we have imagined that we're going to be going to sections, yet it was always a goal and a dream of ours. But we always work just to be better at football. Every single game, just win and win and win. And we always just worried about the game right in front of us. And never the game that's coming, coming week 14, week 13. It was always just each and every game, step by step. What was it, I guess, was there a moment or a play or a game that you thought that you had something special at Casa? Oh, as soon as I met all the boys coming up January 22nd, as soon as we saw us working out, the fact that we're waking up 5.30 in the morning shows that we have something special. It shows that we have a love for the game, a passion for the sport. You know, like we've been married to the game since it were child, children, we've been dreaming about it since we were kids. And as soon as we saw that and everybody else like in each other, that we realized like we've got something special here. We really can have some potential and make it all the way this year. Uh, now you've got Rio Linda coming up. What is it about them that makes them so dangerous? Oh, they're physical. They're, it's going to be a fun game. Whenever we play a physical team, man, we have some fun with it because we can equally match their physicality. And they have a running back who's ridiculously great. I can't take anything away from him. We, they run the ball really well. We stop the run really well. So we'll see how that works out. Yeah, it's going to be a fun game. I'm really looking forward to it. Any single time of competitiveness, I love it. It's going to be great. Awesome. Uh, what would it... What was it about this team? I mean, you mentioned you guys are good at stopping the run, but is there anything else you guys hang your hat on, or is there a mantra in terms of where you guys wanted to focus this well, year? Well, we really just play for each other. I mean, so Coach says that there was, this is a selfish sport, but we have to take it as selflessness as possible. Yet, in the beginning of the season, it may have been about stats and playing for yourself, and then we realized, like, that's not the way you win. So lately, in the last maybe eight games, we realized like to win, to go all the way, you gotta play as a team, gotta play for each other. Whenever one of my brothers have the ball behind me and I'm blocking for them, I'm gonna block my eight dot for them because I know for a fact, if I do that for them, they're gonna do it for me. And it's not even about me having the ball and, and having yards or anything. It's about winning, that's all. And it, no stats matter for us anymore. The only stat that matters is how much we scored and how much they scored at the end of the day. What would it mean for you to cap off the senior year with the section championship? It would mean everything for me. It's been, it's been my dream ever since I was a freshman. We always talked about it. The last time we won a section championship was 2008, which was 10 years ago. And as a freshman, I remember coming in, it was the first week, and my receivers coach walks up to the whole team and goes, listen boys, you guys have been the most potential I've seen coming to the school since 2008. The last team that's won a section is 2008. And he told us, he's like, you guys are the boys to do it. Yeah, you guys have the most potential, and you guys, if you guys work hard enough, you guys can do whatever you guys want with this league. No pressure, right? No. Oh, a lot of pressure, <laughs> but we have some fun. Do you think you guys, do you like that pressure? That oh, we love the pressure. We've had the pressure since freshman year, since we had a good record. And ever since then, people have had expectations. But expectations just mean goals, and goals mean winning. Um, what was that game like at Vanden? I know you guys, the, that's an emotional moment. You got it was. more, but take us through it. I mean, you never know in the playoffs when's going to be your last game as a senior. So I enjoyed every single second of it, every single play, every single word spoken. As soon as I heard the national anthem, I thought, this can be my last time hearing this with pads on. I just started tears of joy. I'm like, I'm not even going to feel bad, whatever happens, the outcome of the game. I'm just going to love every single second of this and just enjoy it. And. <laughs> Um, it was ridiculous. I came into the game, we're like, this is going to be some fun. We're actually going to have some competitiveness in this game. We're going to enjoy it and see what happens. So we played and played our hearts out. And I remember uh, I, I banged up my ribs at one point, maybe like third quarter. I told my coach, I'm like, oh, I need a break, I need a break. And then he walks up to me, like with a defensive coach, walks up and like, takes a knee next to me and goes, there's a team up in paradise who we're playing for today and wishes they would never have taken a break at any single time they could have been the season. And my heart, my ribs, everything just felt better. I came back in the game, played the rest of my heart out for them. It was, it was an emotional game. We played for them. We got a paradise break every single time we could. We played for them, we just played our heart out. What was that just whole experience like and that process for you guys to take on this team as a, as a brotherhood of football's family? It was ridiculous. I mean, People, you don't understand it until you hear it in first person. It was insane because talking to the boys on their team, 
the, seeing the news is not the same thing as talking to them in person and hearing the stories. You see the news and they tell you something and your mind kind of blocks off and tells you things that you want to know. But when you hear it in first person from their personal stories, these are kids my age that went through hell. It sounded like literally hell was hate chasing them. Their own city was chasing them behind them, behind every single car blowing up. And it just sounded like an apocalypse. It was nightmares after nightmares just happening. And I don't know how people, teenagers, 16, 17 year olds, made it out alone. They're making decisions that might change their life. A single stupid little tiny decision could change it forever and ever and ever.